Hey, it's Kid Guru here, and uh, today it's Tech Topic. Tech Topic, basically, uh, you've seen this before, if you haven't. Uh, basically, I just pick a technology topic and go really in detail with it, rather than, you know, talking about multiple topics. I solely talk on either a gadget, whatever it may be, in technology that's, you know, uh, either, you know, from the past, from, you know, whatever, or even, uh, you know, current time. I know if you're a YouTube viewer, uh, I have it. Last video, if you're watching my Ubuntu one, it does have audio. Just you have to check after the intro. You just have to wait after the intro. So sorry about that. I've been really busy. I haven't really, I haven't really got a lot, a lot of videos. Actually, I have. It's just that I don't. I used to release like five, four a day, but now I only release like two or three. But I'm trying to make my videos much, much better. You know, better uh, quality or you know what's in them. You know, making them a better to watch and stuff like that, trying to get a lot of facts straight. So I've been, uh, today's tech topic, as you haven't seen from the title, I don't want to waste too much time, I want to get right into it, because it's a long one. Android, uh, Google's Android. Basically, uh, I have a whole bunch of notes written down here, I've been watching a lot of the developers' videos, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, if you do want a lot more information, I'll have a lot of links posted in the site, and you can go check the site out at code.google.com slash android. And, uh, Basically, uh, it's not a G phone, like they said. Uh, if you haven't seen the presentation by Sergey Bin and Steve Horowitz, it is not a G phone per se. It's you know everybody thought Google would actually make a phone phone. It's not a phone. It's an SDK. It's an operating system basically for mobile phones. So it's an operating system software development kit for uh, developers and stuff like that. You know they're gonna put these on different number of phones and that's how they'll make the G phone. They're not going to make, you know, like there's an iPhone. They're not going to make an iPhone. They're going to make, per se, you know, the G phone by putting this operating system. It's not a computer operating system. I guess it's for the phone. It's for mobile phones. And by, you know, creating this and, see I'm using my hands a lot here, uh, by creating this and putting them on multiple phones as it grows over, it's going to create, you know, a G phone community. That's a Google phone because it's running uh, what's code, uh, what its name is Android. Now, like I said, it's not a phone. It's smart. Oh, it's for smart. You know, it can be used for smartphones, mobile phones, even older model phones, touch screens. It doesn't even have to be a touch screen. Uh, so it's going to be really reaching out to a lot of number of phones. It can be, like I said, older model, uh, current models, future models. It's all going to be, you know, it's all ready for all of that. So Google's been really working hard on this. And uh, it's built on the Linux kernel 2.6 uh, for driver reasons, so they can get you know great driver updates. And it's built, you know, of course Linux has great security stuff like that. It's uh, and it's also open source for developers to add apps. You know, actually I'm not even sure. You know, they'll let you write apps. Uh, you can download the SDK software development kit at code.google.com/android, and they have saved 10 million dollars for this, so you can actually develop your own. Uh, I guess application for uh, Android if they like it and they'll put it on the final you know they'll put it on the versions of Android they have different multiple versions you know for the touch stuff like that so Android will progress along the way as it gains applications so it's really kind of open source uh, app, uh, app I mean not app op open source SDK or you know uh, I should say Android is pretty much based on an open source it can be it's open to developers who want to make this better and yet it still has a great security line of Linux and all that stuff so uh, the uh, applications uh, or the application cycle basically it's built on uh, you know the first off your navigation which is your home screen your home on your phone on the, uh, Android is your navigation point and from there you can go on and what it does basically is say in the example of the video they use let's say you go to your home screen you go to your Gmail it saves from your uh, when you're going to your Gmail, it saves your navigation point because that's where you're starting off. That's your main point, and that's never gonna, you know, delete or anything like that, or you know, or kill that application. What I mean is, so you're gonna go to your G Google Mail, you're gonna proceed, and then you check your mail, and then you just say you go to the web browser. You're gonna need the web browser to actually check it. You know, like uh, so let's say you go to the link or whatever on the web, you're gonna need to kill an app back there, back from the previous line to let the web browser work better, you know, to uh, thrive on. So basically, it's, it's like a chain, but you're going to have to cut one part of the chain, so basically it's going to kill the Gmail app back there. So not per se, like, close it or anything, it's just going to, you know, direct it to the browser, direct, you know, 
So, you you know, it doesn't affect you in any way. You don't even really notice it. It's just going to kill the Gmail app. It's not going to, like, you can still go back to it, of course. You know, this is all happening within nanoseconds. Or, you know, so it's going to direct it to the browser, and then the browser's going to, you know, go on. It just go, goes in that line. Now, let's say you want to go back. Basically, it just restores. It kill. Let's say you go back from the browser. It's going to kill the browser. Restore, you know, as you go down the line. So, basically, it's built on one heavy chain, which is really fed on from application cycling. So it's a never-ending cycle, which provides a lot of power to the applications. And uh, so, like I said, it's a stack of apps and stuff like that, middleware, all that stuff. Oper it's a stack operating system. And like I said, it's built for touch phones, smartphones, older, older and newer models. So uh, in the graphics, it's using 3G high graphics. It can be 3D. The thing is, you can use 3D and 2D. And in some applications, you can use 3D and 2D together. So they ran Quake on it, so, you know, 3G high graphics is very, very, you know, on some touch screens they even ran Quake on it, so it's really, you know, it's pretty high-end graphics. Not, pre you know, really, really great graphics, but, you know, if you can run a game on it, it's pretty, like, Quake, it's pretty good. And uh, it's, it's uh, getting into the graphic department, it uses OpenGL, and you might recognize that from the Mac, it uses OpenGL. Uh, SGL, and, which is 2D, and your 3D graphics are coming from there, your media codecs and networks, is all built on a media network. I forgot where they got it from. They, ah, I forgot the name, but as a service manager, the fonts are handled by FreeType. SGL Lite is used for your its data storage stuff like that, and its browser is built on WebKit. Now you may recognize WebKit because that's what Safari is built on. It's the it's the core of the browser is built on WebKit, and uh, they've uh, worked on rendering that uh, better for faster better and faster browser experience for, uh, you know, different type of phones, like touch and, you know, smaller displays, bigger displays, stuff like that. Uh, it has, Dalt it's used on the Daltic VM virtual machine, which is handling the Android's runtime CPU battery, and it converts them to .dex files for, so the byte, it becomes smaller bytes, and it lets it operate fast, faster in terms of apps and CPU, battery, all that stuff, so it runs for, you know, for great battery usage and stuff like that. Its core library is built on Java utilities, so it's all, you know, the apps and stuff are developed on Java language. The app framework, like I said, is Java, and, uh, you know, uh, you have your applications like home, phone, browser, you know, and open source apps that, you know, like apps that can be developed by future developers or even you out there, you know, if you, if you could develop an app. You can all do that at code.google.com slash android. I'll leave the link in the video description. And uh, moving on, uh, the API, the application programming interface, is uh, built on a location manager, stuff like for stuff like maps. It has maps on it. So, you know, it's good at geographical data to render, you know, like all the other maps applications there on Google. Uh, it has a, a proximity thing, which basically it's an API warner, you know, I mean, it, it let, let's say you're driving and you, uh, in your maps, recognizes that you're close to a friend or something like that. If you register for this, you have to register for this. It'll warn you. It'll, it'll like, tell you you're near whatever, whatever, like a landmark if you do register for this. And if you, if your phone has GPS capabilities, the API will pick that up. So uh, XM, it uses XMPP service, which basically lets you send apps uh, to other Android, <coughs> sorry, other Android uh, platforms, other phones, stuff like that. Uh, it has a notification manager for SMS events, internet stuff. Like if somebody adds you on a social networking thing, it'll, it'll alert you, so it keeps you up to date. Uh, it has view its views on the phone or list grid gallery. Gallery is just uh, another thing you know for cover flow. It's like Apple's cover flow. Uh, you can use that in like internet history. Uh, it has map view. The new ones are map view and web view, which render like Google's map uh, maps. You know. Uh, and GeoData it has a developer toolkit, like I said, so it's open. It's built for open and expandability. You know, you can build apps on the Java using SRC references. You know, it goes into SRC references, assets, layout, and all that stuff. You have to mess with the XML file, and then the apps. And you know, you can develop the app, send it, and you know, basically it'll be built to run on the Android. So you have, you can just code it all through Java, mess with the XML file, and just code it all to the Android in your apps right there, so you can really develop your own app. Now that may take a while, you know, whatever, depending on your skills, or whatever. But it is possible, and they are allowing you to do that. That's why I said they saved ten million dollars for that. And the apps uh, are all built in equality. Now this is kind of 
not really new, but you know how when the iPhone you jailbreak it and you had third-party apps and stuff like that. But for the, uh, Android, they're all built in the quality for third, whether it be third-party apps, even default apps, anything. You can even replace your default apps like Home and Browser. You can take them right off. You know, it's all apps share their own equality. The default or the you know main apps that Google has built aren't more important than the third-party apps. They're all shared. So anyways, guys, I'll leave a lot of videos and uh, links important to this uh, Android, a lot of from Slash Gear, from Android developers, all in the video description located over here. Anyways, uh, this is Kid Guru saying uh, thanks for watching Tech Topic, and please comment, rate, and if you like the video, subscribe. Thanks for watching.